Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making muffins. We're going to be making carrot cake muffins, but these are like muffins with an interesting twist. These are carrot cake muffins with a cheesecake filling. It has this cream cheese stuff in the middle. I've never made muffins with a filling before, so this is going to be kind of interesting. Um, it says here that whether they're a delicious breakfast, snack, or dessert, these moist carrot cake muffins will be the best food you've put in your mouth all day. With smooth cream cheese filling inside and crunchy cinnamon streusel on top, I can't decide which is my favorite part. So I will put a link in the description to the recipe if you want to try it for yourself. It has um, pretty simple ingredients. We have ingredients for the carrot cake itself, and we have ingredients for the cream cheese filling, and then we have ingredients for the streusel topping and ingredients for the glaze. But they're all simple things. They're not like crazy weird ingredients. For example, for the carrot cake muffins, you're going to need two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. I have a brand new bag of Baker's Corner all-purpose flour that I just picked up at Aldi. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? They show it already measured out in a little measuring cup. It is enriched, bleached, and pre-sifted, which is wonderful. It does remind you, though, that flour is raw. It's raw, so please cook fully before enjoying. Don't eat it right out of the bag. That's bad. So we're going to add two and a quarter cups of flour. We also need a half a cup of granulated sugar, a quarter of a cup of light brown sugar, firmly packed. I have this little container here of light brown sugar. I believe this came from, yep, this is some Aldi light brown sugar. I have a little bit left. I think there's enough here though to get a firmly packed quarter cup. It's plenty. We also need um, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So I have my Rumford baking powder right here. We also need a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. Now do keep in mind that baking soda and baking powder are two different things. Um, you can't swap one out for the other. You have to use the one that they indicate. This baking powder, this is a fresh box of baking powder. I'm starting out with so many fresh containers of things. This is pure baking soda. Uh, from Baker's Corner, and that is also an Aldi brand. Rumford is just a regular brand. You also need one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon. I have my Stone Mill ground cinnamon also from Aldi. Bought that not too long ago. We use it a lot around here to make cinnamon toast with. You also need three quarters of a teaspoon of ground ginger. And I have some Happy Belly ground ginger that came from, this is from Amazon. Like this was just an Amazon thing. You need three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, two large eggs, three quarters of a cup of water, a third of a cup of vegetable oil. Now I had a little trouble finding vegetable oil. I had to go to three different stores to find this. <laughs> Aldi did not have it. I went to Harris Teeter, they didn't have it. And I ended up at Lidl. And they had it, fortunately. This is vegetable oil from Lidl. This is a fresh container of that as well because I didn't have any. And when I make a recipe, I do typically try to follow it as closely as possible the first time I make it. Um, I know you can substitute things sometimes, but when I first do it, I try to stick to it if, if I can. Unless there's an ingredient that I just cannot get. And then I will look for a substitution. All right, you also need a cup of grated carrots, and the recipe says that that's about two to three medium-sized carrots. And that's what you need for the, the muffins themselves. And then you get into the cream cheese filling, and there are only three ingredients for that. You need 10 ounces of cream cheese. Now these packs are eight ounces, so you're gonna have to buy two. These are from Happy Farms. I purchased these at Aldi just yesterday. And it needs to be softened, so I'll lift these out for a little bit. They're nice and soft in these little boxes here. 
I have two of these. So you're going to need a full eight ounce and then another two ounces from your second one. Unless in your area they come in other quantities. So you need that and you also need a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Um, actually I grabbed almond. Not almond extract. You want to, It's going to look like this but it's going to say vanilla and not almond. I'm glad I noticed that. Yes, I do have vanilla extract. And to prove it, here it is. Here's my box. I had to get a new vanilla extract. I used up the last of it in the rest, the last cooking thing that we did. This is from Stone Mill, which is an Aldi brand. This is pure vanilla extract made with Madagascar vanilla beans, non-GMO, gluten-free, no corn syrup. Very nice. I never knew it was so wonderful. Okay, and then for the streusel topping, you need one cup of all-purpose flour, two-thirds of a cup of granulated sugar, a half, a half of a cup of unsalted butter melted, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So we'll be doing all that. And then finally for the glaze, you need a teaspoon of milk and a quarter of a cup of powdered sugar which I have this package here. Actually, this is great value. This came from Walmart. And I have used this in multiple recipes and we have more than enough to get a quarter cup of powdered sugar from here. Also known as confectioner's sugar. So that is our list of ingredients. So we are making it from scratch. So anyone who's upset with anybody making food from a kit, you can just unclutch your pearls for the day and unbunch your panties. It's going to be all right. Um, yeah, so it, it looks pretty simple. We only have nine steps to this process. And I am really curious to see how these turn out. Like I say, I've never, I've never made a muffin with a filling in it before. So this is really interesting to me. So let's get started on our carrot cakes with cream cheese filling. All right, I have ingredients everywhere. I have so many little bowls and containers of things. Um, according to these instructions, the, thir the first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and line standard cupcake pan with paper liners and set aside. Now this recipe makes 18 cupcakes. And you should always read everything before you start because I didn't realize I needed 18 cupcake. You know, I have this 12 cupcake pan and I didn't realize until I started making this video that I needed 18. So I had to run out and buy another one. <laughs> and I did not change shirts. I just did like they do in TV shows when they're trying to hide a pregnancy. Like they put stuff in front of the belly. I just strategically kind of kept my purse like in front of me to <laughs> censor my shirt out in public. So it was kind of funny. So the first thing we want to do is take our pans here and line them with cupcake liners. I have these cute little green and white polka dotted ones left over from something else. And I thought we would just use these right here. So I'm just going to set them in there. Like that. These cupcake pans, this is a Crofton pan from Aldi, and they're kind of shallow. Um, this is just a cheap little pan I picked up at Walmart, and there, this one's a little bit deeper. Okay, now I'm going to set these aside. to step two to make streusel topping in a medium bowl stir together one cup of all-purpose flour two-thirds of a cup of granulated sugar a teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of salt 
and then you add your melted unsalted butter and stir it with a fork until crumbly and then we'll set that aside. But I can't go any further until I show you my bowls. Now I love these bowls. I love to show them off all the time. <laughs> these are my colorful little mixing bowls. Look how pretty they are. These are from Zach, Z-A-K exclamation point. And you can find these on Amazon and they have different color combinations. Um, I found these in an antique store. They're not, they're not an antique though. Now, I have had a couple people tell me they bought some of these and had them crack or they were damaged when they used them. Um, I never put these in a dishwasher. I always wash them by hand and I don't put them in the refrigerator either. So I, I don't know that you can be super careless with these bowls. They're made of melamine, so they're not made for, you know, crazy usages. So this is the largest one here. We're going to save that for mixing up the muffin stuff, the muffin mixture. We're going to use this green one here for the streusel. So what do we do? We want to take the flour. We have our flour here. Got our flour, and then we want to add in our sugar here. There. We have a teaspoon of cinnamon, and today, again, like I was showing you earlier, I'm using this nice stone mill ground cinnamon. This is from Aldi. It has a little top on it that you can pop open and use it like a little shaker. Um, but when I'm measuring it out, I just open it all the way up like this and just take it out like that. Okay, so we have our cinnamon here. Let me just put that over the top. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt from my lovely Dollar Tree salt shaker. It's made of genuine glass and has an authentic metal lid on it. Okay, there's that. And I'm going to just take my whisk and combine all the dry ingredients before we add the butter. Next, we're going to take our melted butter and it says to stir it in with a fork until crumbly. So there's my half a cup of butter right there. And I'll just take my fork and stir that in. People often ask me why I edit out the stirring sounds. Especially when you have metal, the sounds can be very jarring. If I feel they're too loud or too sharp, I do edit them out and I will always do that. Some parts of cooking are just very noisy and I don't feel that they belong in this type of video. So I remove them at my own discretion. It is beginning to become crumbly. Or it's beginning to do something. Ooh, look at it. It looks like sand. Some people get very upset if I don't leave in all of the stirring sounds, but I promise you, if I cut out any sounds, there was a reason. <laughs> okay, I don't 
know if this is what they mean by crumbly, but we're getting something. Okay, now we're going to set this aside. For our next step, we are going to be mixing together the filling, which is going to be 10 ounces of cream cheese, which is softened. softened. So it's going to be a full brick. This is eight ounces. And then another two ounces in here. I'm going to be putting that in here. And I'm also going to add in, let's see, vanilla and sugar. I'm going to be adding in one quarter of a cup of sugar and one tablespoon and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. So here I have my 10 ounces of cream cheese. I'm going to add my sugar there and my vanilla extract there. Now I'm going to go mix this up and then we'll see what it looks like when I come back. All right, look at that. That turned out really pretty. So that's going to be our filling for the muffins there. That's supposed to do 18 muffins. I don't think you put a whole lot in each one. All right. So now we're going to set that aside and now we're going to mix together the ingredients for the muffins themselves. So you're going to need a large bowl and you're going to whisk together the dry ingredients listed for the muffins. I'm going to start out with this bowl. Um, if it's not big enough, um, I will just switch over to my big yellow Tupperware bowl. It's quite a bit larger than this, but we'll start with this. So the first thing we have is two and a quarter cups of flour. So we're going to do all the dry ingredients first. And then we have a half a cup of granulated sugar right there. There's that. We need a quarter of a cup of light brown sugar, firmly packed. <laughs> it went in there like a hockey book. <laughs> One and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And again, we have this really nice Rumford aluminum free baking powder right here. This is the kind my mom always used, so that's what I buy. So this is our baking powder right here. And then we want to add in a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. And this is from Baker's Corner. So we're going to put that in right there. <clears throat> One and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon. And again, we're using the Stone Mill ground cinnamon. I think in this recipe I have used up all of my little, <laughs> my little containers to measure things out in. And then we're going to do three quarters of a teaspoon of ground ginger. That is from Happy Belly, which I got on Amazon. There. Oops. It's a little bit, a little bit in the bottom, stuck to the bottom. There we go. Then we want to do three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Here's my salt, there, okay, and that is all of the dry ingredients. Let me go grab a whisk, actually, okay, I'm going to whisk together the dry ingredients. Okay, let's see what our next move is. Okay, and now in a small bowl, I want to whisk together the eggs, water, and oil. There are a lot of steps to this thing. For this step, we will go with the lovely blue bowl. The eggs we're using today are from Gold Hen. These are from Aldi. Farm fresh eggs. No growth hormones. how pretty they are. I just took these two. <laughs> Aren't they pretty? So here we have our two eggs. Bloop. 
beaten just like that so we have our eggs and then we have our vegetable oil right here and some water too eggs, water, and oil. Okay. Now I have to stir this into our dry mixture. It says to stir it. And I'm just going to use this little thing right here. Good. <laughs> Smells like carrot cake already. grated carrots and stir well to combine. Now I'm not very good at folding anything in because I have no patience, so bear with me. If I'm doing this wrong, I don't care. You do realize I eat plain bran flakes with no milk. My taste buds are not that refined. It's, it's okay. And my kids hate carrot cake, so they are not going to be eating this. I'm actually giving these away. And they are going to be consumed by teenage boys who will inhale whatever you give them. So it's okay. It says, I must stir well to combine after folding in this here. to combine. Okay. I think that's pretty well combined. Our next step is to start placing the mixes in the in the little cups. So we want to drop about one and a half to two tablespoons of the batter into each cup and then spread to cover the bottom and then place a heaping tablespoon of the filling on top of that and then cover with carrot batter to fill the cups three quarters full then top with the streusel topping. I have these wonderful little measuring spoons from Farberware. I have one here that's two tablespoons and one that's one I'm not, I'm not great at this, so I'm just going to try my best. Okay, so do the filling. Okay. Okay. 
I'm a little concerned about these because the cups are sort of shallow, but we'll see. Oh, darn. I knew I'd do that. Well, that's what a wet rag is for. That one went down in there so pretty. Did you see that? This one doesn't want to go. Oh, it made it like a little heart. Okay, all right, now I'm going to attempt to put the filling on top of that. It's quite thick. I'm going to need a way to scoop it out of there. Okay, I don't know if this will work, but I'm gonna try it. It said to do a heaping tablespoon, and I'm not doing quite a tablespoon. I just have a feeling I'm not going to have enough. I don't know why. It looks lumpy. see if I can scrape up enough for these last two to have some anyway. Okay, give that one a little bit. All right. And we come back again and we cover that with the mix over the top. want these muffin cake, the little muffin liners to be three quarters full. I think I'm over three quarters on most of these, like 
that one in particular is going to be catastrophic, but it's like watching a train wreck. You can't really do anything about it, so you might as well just stand back and observe it. I always overfill the first muffin or cupcake. I don't know why. I always do that. I get a little bit overzealous. Get over that. <laughs> I'm running out. I'm going to have to scrape. <laughs> if I could transfer. <laughs> no, don't try it. I don't really have enough to cover these. <laughs> much in the bottom. was not able to completely cover all of them, but again, don't yell at me. <laughs> don't yell at me. I am a paralegal. I am not a baker. I can help you with a patent application, but I am not so great with muffins. All right. Okay, now we are supposed to top it with the streusel topping. It doesn't say how to top it with this stuff. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. My hands are clean. Um, I'm, it's not as crumbly as I would want it to be. I'm just going to crumble some streusel topping on there. I'm not really sure how much to add to each of these. I'm afraid that one's going to overflow. That's my Krakatoa right there. Oops. I'm just taking my fingers, and my hands are clean. I'm just taking my fingers and kind of breaking it up a little bit. I'm just putting that over the top. One of my neighbor children is outside crowing like a rooster. I don't know why. He just went running down the street crowing. 
like a rooster. <laughs> He's living his best life. He's still out there shrieking, so if you hear an odd noise, it might be him. And we're gonna bake this after I get all this streusel on here. We're gonna bake this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. This one's going to be really weird. I think these are going to smell great while they bake. Okay, so that's got the streusel topping on there. We're gonna go ahead and bake these at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes, and then we'll see how they look. Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how good these smell. Oh, they smell so good. Wow. So it actually ended up taking about 25 minutes to bake these through. You wanna make sure that you can insert a toothpick all the way through the, the muffin, not the filling, but the muffin, and have it come out clean. And um, then, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let them cool like this for 10 minutes, and then you transfer them to a rack. Kind of like, and I'm, I'm gonna put them on racks so they can cool completely, and then we're going to make the glaze to go on top. I have now allowed these to cool completely. Look at these beautiful things. Oh my gosh. So you can kind of see where some of the filling bubbled up, but I don't really know that it matters all that much. Um, yeah, I know that's like, that's filling right there. So if I were to make these again, I would just not put quite so much in the bottom, you know, before I add the filling and that gives you more to go on top of the filling. So don't put as much in the bottom as I did. <laughs> don't do that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a little bit of glaze, and I'm very happy because that means we finally get to use the little bowl for my set, which we almost never get to use. This is a very simple little glaze, and then um, we're going to put a little bit of glaze on top of these muffins. So for this glaze, we're gonna take a quarter cup of powdered sugar and add in a teaspoon of milk, not much, and mix it together. Okay, 
I'm not terribly happy with the consistency, but it's a little bit better than it was. I'm just going to put a little bit on here. I'm not going to go crazy with it. a lot on there it's gonna look like you got really excited with this recipe all right there's some and I'll do these I'm gonna leave a few unglazed I think so the top is nice and crunchy and it smells so so good and smells really really yummy leaves before un undone. So look at these beauties. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to try these. All right, it's time to try our carrot cake muffins with the cream cheese filling. It's called a cheesecake filling, but look at that. What? Oh my gosh. Um, wow. Oh, these smell so good. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, so we're just going to take one of these right here and oh, look at it cute. Look at it. Oh my gosh. This top part is quite solid. <laughs> yeah, it, it crisps up. It's that butter. Okay, let me see here. Okay, the paper is kind of Stuck to it a little bit. It's coming away though. There we go. Are you one of those people? Do you peel it all the way around before you bite into a cupcake or a muffin, or do you? How do you do it? I peel it down just a little bit like this, and then you know, just kind of work my way around. So let's try it. Oh. Mmm. Oh, that is delicious. And the glaze is really nice too. Oh, wow. That is really good. And you can see the filling in there. I really like that part too. It is really good. I love the crunchy streusel stuff. Mmm. Oh my word. That's delicious. That is really yummy. Mmm. That is spectacular. That is so good. Now, I did mess up pretty much every dish in my house. Because, you know, I put everything in little bowls or little cups before I, you know, add it. So, it was it was very... You end up with a lot of dirty dishes if you do that. Um, but while it was cooling, I just went ahead and washed everything. So, it's good. One little tip I can give you about cooking that I do is that I clean up as I go. When I have an opportunity to clean up or put away things, I do it. So I don't have a great big mess at the end. And it makes me, I can enjoy the food much more if I know I don't have a kitchen full of dirty dishes to deal with. It makes it easier to enjoy what I made. Mmm. <laughs> that is really good. That's delicious. Mm. It's very simple ingredients. You just have to follow the steps and then just kind of assemble it all. It was very easy. So, so simple. Oh my gosh. Look at these beauties. Wow. I really do. I, I think this is a great recipe. I think it's a great thing to try, especially if you like uh, cheesecake type stuff. I've never made a muffin with a filling in it before. So I was really curious to see if I would like this or not. I really do. It does kind of become like cheesecake in the middle of it. So you get this nice little surprise when you bite into it if you don't know it's there. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. And I love cheesecake and I love carrot cake. So this kind of combines both. And they're, they're, just, they're just wonderful. Oh my God. Look at that happy little thing. Mm -hmm. It's 
like something you'd get in a little bakery or something. Yes, it turned out wonderfully. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed getting to see these carrot cake, uh, cheesecake, cream cheese muffins come into being. I really enjoyed making them and it's always so much fun to get to try new recipes with you. Thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.